December 21st, 2021, 4 p.m., Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, eight-year-old Lee Marion Kane is killed in a tragic shooting. Halifax Regional Police said the child was in a vehicle with a 26-year-old man when shots were fired at their vehicle during rush hour in the area of Windmill Road and Waddell Avenue. The shooting occurred in the busy commercial and industrial area in Dartmouth. Police said the suspects were described as two black males driving a burgundy SUV, possibly a Chevrolet, with tinted windows. Lee Marion died in hospital from his injuries while the 26-year-old man was treated for non-life-threatening injuries. Lee Marion Kane was a grade 3 student at Nelson Winder Elementary School and had already made a huge impression on his community of North Preston. After his death, his cousin and CEO of North Preston's future, Miranda Kane, said it wasn't just their family that was grieving. It felt like the whole community lost a child. We lost a big, very valuable person who would have contributed so much to our community had his life been spared, she said in December of 2021. The Nova Scotia government is offering its biggest reward in the history of its unsolved crimes program, $250,000, an amount $100,000 more than the current maximum allowed for other cases. Lee Marion Kane, or Marmar as he was known, was described as a special sweet boy by a Dalhousie Outreach Dental Clinic member in Lee Marion's school, Juliet Thomas. Thomas would go on to say Marmar was always giving high fives or hugs with his big, contagious smile, cool with swagger, and best little outfits. This case is quite possibly the saddest, most tragic, and most heartbreaking homicide of all the unsolved murders I've looked into. The incomprehensible senselessness of the shooting is infuriating. The utterly callous and needless loss of an innocent, beloved eight-year-old child is truly agonizing and completely unfathomable. Nova Scotia as a province must rally together to find answers for Lee Marion Kane and his grieving, heartbroken family, friends, and community. Who was the 26-year-old man in the vehicle with Lee Marion Kane? Why was he being shot at? Does he know anything at all about his attackers? If the shooting took place during rush hour, how many people witnessed something leading up to, during or after the homicide? How many people saw the two shooters? Was it a case of mistaken identity? Or is there a connection between the killers and the 26-year-old man and or Lee Marion Kane? These questions and many, many more desperately need to be answered. If you know something about the case, share it. We as a people must turn over every stone until justice is rightfully delivered to Lee Marion Kane and his grieving family, who have been left behind with their anguish and their memories of an amazing little boy who was stolen from the world before he even had the chance to see his 10th birthday. Anyone with information on the killing of Lee Marion Kane should call the Rewards for Major Unsolved Crimes program at one 710 9090 February 20th, 2021, 2.10 p.m., Halifax Regional Police respond to a report of a motor vehicle accident at the intersection of Mount Edward Road and Cranberry Crescent in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. Investigations uncovered that the driver of the vehicle had been shot and that his collision into a utility pole was the result of the shooting. 25-year-old Joseph Jojo Beals was transported to the hospital where he would pass away from his injuries. The medical examiner ruled the cause of death to be homicide. 
a GoFundMe fundraising page set up for the Beals' family at the time of the killing described Joseph Beals as a quiet, respectful, and funny young man. He loved his family and friends and would not hesitate to do what he could for any one of them, wrote the page's organizer. Joseph Beals left behind a wife and two young children. Investigators believe there are persons who have information they have not offered to the police that could result in arrests and possible charges. Gun violence in HRM continues, with seemingly no end in sight, and the murder of Joseph Jojo Beals is yet another heartbreaking example of this. Any person with information regarding the homicide of Joseph Jojo Beals should call the Rewards for Major Unsolved Crimes program at one 710 9090 July 17, 2002. Police in Nova Scotia receive a report from Paula Forbes, wife of 37-year-old Bruce Forbes, that her husband hadn't been seen since July 16, 2002. Bruce Andrew Forbes was living at 35 Lansdowne Drive, Halifax at the time of his disappearance. Investigations revealed that Mr. Forbes was last seen in Halifax on July 16, 2002, at a Regent Road residence. It is believed that he had a large sum of money in his possession at the time of his disappearance. Bruce Forbes suffered from a serious health condition and required medication on a daily basis. It is believed that he was not in possession of this medication at the time of his disappearance. The circumstances of Mr. Forbes's disappearance are considered suspicious and foul play is suspected, stated police in a news release. Police believe there are individuals who have information that could result in an arrest and possible charges. Was Bruce Andrew Forbes robbed and callously murdered over the aforementioned large sum of money that he was carrying around on July 16, 2002? Did his serious medical condition play any role in the events that surrounded his disappearance? For now, there are no answers, just the memory of another human being that hauntingly vanished. Any person with information regarding the disappearance of Bruce Andrew Forbes should call the Rewards for Major Unsolved Crimes program at one 710 9090 October 30th, 1988, at approximately 1 a.m., police respond to a report of a shooting at 2399 Creighton Street, Halifax. Upon police arrival, the victim, 33-year-old Donald Charles Downey, was found at this location, suffering from a gunshot wound. Donald Charles Downey was taken to the hospital, where he would die shortly thereafter. Investigations revealed that Mr. Downey was residing at an Abbey Road Halifax address at the time of his homicide. Mr. Downey had been known to frequent the north end of Halifax in the Uniac Square area where he was fatally shot. Downey's murder has never been solved and law enforcement believe there are people who have information that could advance their investigation. Details about this case and the life of Donald Charles Downey are painfully scarce, and like many of the pictures of unsolved homicide victims that I've seen, there is just something so terribly haunting about Donald Charles Downey's face. One Reddit user commenting on the homicide would write, speculating, it was over drugs, I have a gut feeling. Another wrote, referring to the public housing residential area, Uniac Square, in the north central area of Halifax where Mr. Downey was killed. I saw a brawl at the square around those days. It was so gruesome, it'd make your eyes bleed, just watching it all go down. Any person with information regarding the murder of Donald Charles Downey should call the Rewards for Major Unsolved Crimes program at one 888 Seven one zero nine zero nine zero.
September 2nd, 2000, 1050 AM, police respond to a report of an unresponsive male who was found by two pedestrians in a wooded area behind 299 Main Avenue in Fairview. Upon police arrival, the victim, 30-year-old Douglas Keating, was pronounced dead. The investigation would reveal that Douglas Keating had been assaulted and that he died of blunt force trauma. It is believed that Mr. Keating was assaulted elsewhere and later dumped at the recovery site by his attacker or attackers, where he was later found. According to police, he was last seen alive the night before in the Fairview area. Investigators believe there are people who have information that could help solve the case and they are urging those people to come forward. Very little information is available about Douglas Keating and the circumstances surrounding his killing. One Facebook user commenting on a Halifax Regional Police post about the case had only this to say, Doug was my cousin. He didn't deserve this. Was Mr. Keating attacked randomly, or did he somehow know his assailants? Was it a robbery, or were there other motives for the killing? It's yet another sad mystery and another unsolved homicide that remains an open case in the humble province of Nova Scotia, Canada. Any person with information regarding the murder of Douglas Keating should call the Rewards for Major Unsolved Crimes program at one 710 9090 Sunday, February 7th, 2021. Halifax Regional Police respond to a weapons complaint. Residents called 911 to report hearing gunshots fired in the hallway of an apartment building located at Washmill Lake Drive in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Upon arrival, police discovered a deceased male with multiple gunshot wounds in the hallway. 26-year-old Brandon Reginald Polagato was pronounced dead on the scene and the medical examiner ruled the death a homicide. I urge anyone with information to come forward, Brad Johns, Attorney General and Minister of Justice, said in a news release. I hope the addition of this case to the rewards program will assist investigators to identify those responsible, he would go on to say. In a February 2021 interview with CTV Atlantic, Paul Legato's friend, Jacob Cuvelier, called the killing a complete tragedy. He was an amazing, amazing father, amazing friend, brother of mine, brother to so many people, said Cuvelier at the time. He was that guy to just lift your mood when you were going through something in your personal life. Paul Legato was an aspiring hip-hop artist. Cuvelier called him a deceivingly good athlete who was working a number of jobs and hoping to own his own business one day. Polagato died on the same block as his good friend Shakur Jeffries, who was shot to death by Carvel Clayton back in 2016. Anyone with information on the killing of Brandon Polagato should call the Rewards for Major Unsolved Crimes program at one 710 9090 December 3rd, 2008, 35-year-old Linda Rochelle Vallad was walking at 9.05 p.m. through the parking lot at 6 Primrose Street, Dartmouth, when she was struck and killed by a tractor-trailer cab that had been parked in the lot. The truck continued out of the lot onto Primrose Street and turned right onto Victoria Road. It remains unknown whether the driver realized the truck had struck Linda Vallad. The truck was described by witnesses as a tractor-trailer cab with chrome moose bars, a protective grill, on the front. Investigators received a number of tips from the public. However, they have yet to locate or identify the truck or the driver involved in the collision. They believe there are people who have information in relation to Linda Rochelle Vallad's death. Witnesses said the tractor-trailer cab was white. There are so many questions left unanswered in regard to this very sad case. Was it an accident? 
Was the driver of the truck unaware of what happened, or was the victim known to the truck driver? Was there a motive, or was it a cruel, random act of violence? The family of Linda Rochelle Vallaud deserves answers, answers that for now remain hauntingly elusive. Contact 902-490-5016 if you have information about the fatal hit and run of Linda Rochelle Vallaud. April 16th, 2022. In the early morning hours, a shooting took place on Brunswick Street in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Multiple 911 calls were made to the Halifax Regional Police who, upon arrival, discovered 18-year-old Simon Joseph Morrison close to the intersection of Uniac Street. The victim was pronounced dead at the scene. The Nova Scotia Medical Examiner Service ruled the death a homicide. Police say they received a weapons call at 1.37 a.m. Atlantic time on Saturday for the street's 2400 block. Anyone with information about this act of gun violence against Simon Morrison is urged to come forward, said Justice Minister Brad Johns. Simon Morrison's online obituary was later inundated with kind words about the young man from those who knew him best. His school principal would state, he was a charming, very witty, intelligent, and fun young man. A close friend wrote, You were one of the most caring, funny, loyal, and the strongest young man I know. I can't say enough about how much you will be missed. One of Simon's teachers wrote, His energy was contagious, and his charm unforgettable. Simon Morrison's sister would write, I love you more than words can explain, brother. You've always been there for me when I needed you the most. You always had my back, and I always had yours. Life is going to be different without you always by my side, but I know you'll always be with me. It hurts to know there was so much to life. We didn't get to experience it together. Simon Morrison's homicide has clearly shattered not just a family, but an entire community of people who can now only grieve for a beloved young man who's Life was snatched up far, far too soon. Anyone with information about the murder of Simon Morrison is asked to call police at 902-490-5020. August 21st, 2000, 1.20 p.m. Police respond to a report of a death at 3628 Windsor Street, Halifax. Upon police arrival, victim Donald David Snellgrove was found dead in the living room of his Windsor Street apartment. Police investigations uncovered that Donald Snellgrove had been assaulted sometime prior to his death, and this attack was a contributing factor in his demise. Authorities have information about an alleged disturbance and assault of which Donald Snellgrove was the victim. This took place on Romans Avenue on Friday, August 18, 2000, at around 9 p.m. Law enforcement is also interested in speaking to anyone who may have seen Donald Snellgrove's 1988 Gray Plymouth Reliant in the area at the time of this disturbance and assault. By September 2000, Halifax police had arrested a suspect who was in his 30s in connection with the murder of Donald Snellgrove, but charges were never laid and the identity of the man never made public. What actually happened to Donald Snellgrove? Who attacked him four days before he was found dead in his apartment? Why wasn't he in the hospital if his injuries from the first attack were so serious? who was the initial suspect arrested and later released by authorities. It's yet another sorrowful, confounding case that seems to have little hope of ever being solved. Any person with information regarding the murder of Donald David Snellgrove should call the Rewards for Major Unsolved Crimes program at one 710 9090 November 20th, 1998, at 9.41 p.m., 
Police respond to a report of a double shooting at 15 Parkmore Avenue, Halifax. Upon arrival, 36-year-old Gail Marie Stone was located inside the residence, having suffered injuries as a result of being shot. Gail Stone was taken to the QE2 hospital, where she died from her injuries four days later. 32-year-old Richard Joseph Marriott, common-law husband to Gail Stone, who was in a wheelchair, was also located inside the residence, where he suffered from fatal gunshot wounds. Richard Marriott was seen alive at 9.15 p.m. this same evening on Dutch Village Road. Mr. Marriott was driving a maroon-colored 1996 Dodge Caravan, and it is believed that he arrived home at 9.30 p.m. The two victims were discovered a short time later. Richard Marriott was facing three drug charges at the time of his killing. Police found drug paraphernalia and a briefcase containing a large sum of money in the house afterwards. The money was later forfeited to the Crown as proceeds of crime. Many feel these killings are related to the feud between the rival Halifax gangs, the Marriotts, of which Richard Marriott belonged, and the Melvins. Two days prior to the incident, on November 18, 1998, there was a shooting between the Melvins and the Marriotts outside the IWK Children's Hospital, and the day prior there had been a shooting outside of a pizza shop in Spryfield, close to where Richard Marriott resided. Jimmy Melvin Sr., one of the leaders of the Melvin gang, was injured in the pizza shop shooting. An article on Reddit claims that Richard's brother and gang leader, Terry, believed it possible that Richard was killed by their other brother, Billy, who had some kind of bad blood with his brother, Richard. Whatever really happened, this case is complex and resolution appears still very far away. Any person with information regarding the killings of Richard Joseph Marriott and Gail Marie Stone should call the Rewards for Major Unsolved Crimes program at one 710 9090